Druid Generation 2 control on a punch press, mechanical punch press. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is turn your disconnect from off to on and start your motor in a forward direction. Now take a look at your keypad screen. It's going to ask you if safeguards are in place. Press yes. This is your run screen. Now the first thing that we need to do is run a reference cycle. And what the reference cycle does is sets a zero point. In order to do that, you're going to need to inch your press to top dead center and also note the position of the resolver. So let's show you that now. So as you can see, the press isn't at top dead center, so I'm just going to carefully bump it until it is. As you can see, the ram is near vertical and completely open. Now come take a look at the resolver position. As you can see, the, the resolver mounting base is back here, this flat piece of metal. The keyway for a resolver is perpendicular to that mounting base. And it's vitally important that that is how it's set up or it, it will not work. As you can see, this is perpendicular to the mounting base behind it. And that's true if it's mounted vertically or horizontally. So now that your RAM is at top dead center and the position of your resolver keyway is correct, you're going to want to flip your key from run to program. You're going to scroll down to number four, system setup. Enter security code. If you haven't set one, it's enter. Now the first option is reference cycle. This is what we're after. Press enter. It's going to tell you press must be at top, which we've already done, and the sync switch must be off. Press yes to start. So we'll press yes. Now walk over to the pop ups. So here I'm just going to hold the palm buttons in inch mode and in hand mode until the press stops moving. Go take a look at your keypad screen. And you'll see that it's put some values in here for you. Press enter to store those values. Now the next thing that we're going to set up is our brake monitor. In order to do that, you need to know how long it takes your press to stop. So let me show you that now. You're going to flip your key from program to run. Go over to your palm buttons. Run your press and then just hit stop. On the screen, you will now see your stop time measured in milliseconds displayed on the screen, 253. Flip your key from run to program. Go to option two, brake monitor. Now, there's a fault and a warning point, and we know it stops at 253 milliseconds. So we're going to warn ourselves once it takes above 300 milliseconds to stop and then we'll fault the press out when it takes 350 milliseconds to stop. So as you can see, I'm adding 50 for the warning and 100 milliseconds for the fault set point. Now we're going to attempt to run single cycle. Flip your key from program to run and go over to your palm buttons. Um, also flip your key from inch to single. Press your palm buttons. 
You'll notice that it's not stopping at top dead center. Walk over to our keypad screen. And we'll see, yeah, it is actually stopping at 75 degrees. So we're going to change that. Flip your key from run to program. Scroll down to angle settings, number five. The angle setting that we're concerned about for single stroke is the SS single stroke top stop angle. If you press enter, you can see that it's stopping, starting to stop at 330 degrees, and that results in us actually stopping at about 75 degrees. So what we want to do is subtract about 75 degrees from this value. So let's put in 265. You can flip your key from program to run once you've set that up and head back over to your palm buttons. You can see it's now stopping much closer to top dead center. If you do need to adjust the angle further, just simply subtract or add however much the screen is telling you that you're going over. So for example, here it says we're going over five degrees, which is close enough to run the press, but you could subtract five from that angle once again if you would like it closer.